there's a chapter which I think is handy for everyone, at least most of the people I know, called The Gift of Forgetting. And uh, The Gift of Forgetting tells the punchline of what for me is most important about the process of learning a poem by heart, which is not actually knowing the poem by heart. That's not what's most important. What's most important, I'm going to give you the punchline now, what's most important is that those places that you find most challenging to remember are the places where the poem is literally charting a map of where it is calling you beyond your known self. So the idea is to look forward to the places you forget. Because in that moment of forgetting, I talk about four different practices you can do in the moment of forgetting, and I won't go over them here, but several that are very, very profound is to look deeply into that which is forgotten and see how is it calling you beyond your habitual self? How is it breaking up the mundane, the daily patterns of who and how you are and asking you to expand, inviting you to expand beyond who you think you are? Maybe it's the meaning of it. Maybe it's the voice of it. Maybe it's the rhythm of it. Maybe it's calling you into a sense of claiming your authority that's uncomfortable for you, or a depth of your grief that you haven't touched. Or maybe it's the rhythm of it, or the syntax that's undoing some rhythm in your body that's been inscribed since our earliest moments when we shaped ourselves in order to survive in order to get what we wanted and get away from what we didn't want. And the good news is we grew up and now we don't have to live within those narrow boundaries. The voice doesn't have to stay within its precinct of being always happy or always pissed. You know, if you <laughs> I used to teach in a healing school and there was one um, one, one school on the West Coast in San Diego and one school on the East Coast in New York City. And we teach the same, supposedly the same lessons on each side of the country on consecutive weekends. So we had all the Californians on one weekend and we had all the New York Cityites on the other weekend. And you know, you see how, how culturally we just, it's just natural, that's what human beings do. We quarantine ourselves into different parts of our bodies, into different parts of our voices. It seemed like the people in San Diego were all really nice and didn't have too much going on from the waist down. And it seemed like the people in New York were all really pissed <laughs> and didn't really care what was going on in their hearts. But of course, as you knocked on the door, of each of those people, you found that the other side lived and thrived within them. So there's a chapter in the book called Undressing Your Voice. It talks about how we quarantine our voice into a certain parameter and the liberation that can come when you burst that parameter open. Um, and uh, there's a, a wonderful chapter on memory on the fact that memory, until about the 16th century, memory was understood as a mystical practice. There's no question about it. It's at the heart of some of the most profound Greek mystical practices, all sorts of mystical practices. And it is my ulterior motive that it will be remembered as a very, very powerful mystical practice. It is for me.